Hey everyone, welcome to our show. This is Entrepreneurship episode number 22. Wow, believe it, we are 21 episodes behind our 22nd episodes. We are excited here again doing our show live here on Facebook. Today we're talking about you must compel to sell. What's that about? We're talking about your story, why your story must be compelling. And before we even get into the story, like I always like to do, I enjoy words. I am really a wordsmith. I loved words since I was a young kid. But that being said, I want to get into the definition of the word compel, not persuade. And that's important too. But the word compel, it means, and this is from dictionary.com. It means to secure or bring out, bring about by force. That again, this is definition two, to secure or bring about by force. Definition one is to force or drive, especially to a course of action. So that's similar to being persuaded, but compel is more so appearing to be something like against your will, maybe, maybe it can be taken as that, but nevertheless, it also says to overpower. So that implies that it is against your will. So you're overpowered. It may not be something that you want to do, but you're compelled to some kind of persuasion. And again, today we're talking about you must compel to sell. And we're talking about your story. And I have a good friend of mine, Art Jones, actually, he did a show with me a little while ago. And we're talking about the power of your story. And believe it or not, there is power in your story. Again, you must compel to sell. And I, I seen a phrase on here on Facebook on one of the uh, videos I watched, uh, one of the many videos I watched here on Facebook. And it says the game is sold, not told. And it's a different spin. And essentially, it's the same thing that I've just said. Your story must compel. The story that you and I are telling, it must compel to sell. So as an entrepreneur, you must have a story. You must have a story as far as the beginning or the, the origin of your, your, your product or your service that you're offering. And it's not so much just about you. It is about you to an extent, but it ends up being more so about your brand. And on about two weeks ago, I did a show and it was about, uh, I can't remember what it was about, but <laughs> just kind of evades my mind right now. But I did a show last week and let's see if we can find it here. And it was episode number 20, I believe. Yeah, it was episode number 20. And it was talking about I talked about your your brand, your story, and that there is a clear distinction between your brand and your story. Your brand, again, is what your customer, your client, how they perceive you, how they how you perceive me, be it confident, lack of confidence, be again, how you are perceived. You may have lack of confidence and be overly confident. Again, it is the perception of your customer or your client. So that is your brand. And your story is what you will tell your customer or your client. Again, how your product originated or you know, just your service, how things came to be in existence. That from where you started to where you are now. And again, you're not going to tell them every staking detail because that's not necessarily important. It is, but in most cases, we have just but a few seconds in order to compel. We have a few seconds to persuade. So that being said, your story must compel to sell. In order for you to sell your service, your product, or anything that you are trying to sell here online through your book, your movie, your product, your service, anything, you must have a story that accompanies your product or your service. Anything that you are trying to sell, you must have a story. And hence the term, and I was looking this up here on Google and 
they talked about that it was an urban, <laughs> it was an urban term. The game is told, not sold. And it's powerful because, again, it's yet a different perspective, but it is yet all the more powerful because when we understand that the bigger picture, that it is essentially who has a better story. And I'm not trying to burst your bubble, but the reality of it is, is that this is what we're dealing with. This is why our stories are so powerful. Think about it, guys. It's not so wonderful that, I mean, it's not so much about how wonderful your product might be. I seen a, uh, some kind of educational program a little while ago on television and the professor asked his students, his marketing students, he says, well, how many of you can make a burger better than McDonald's? And more than half of the class raised their hand. And you know why more than half the class raised their hand? Because it's true. Most of us could probably make a hamburger better than McDonald's with our eyes closed. Not even knowing, barely knowing how to cook. The point of it is, is that McDonald's has a story. McDonald tells a story. Every time you bite into that burger, you take your children to McDonald's. There is a story behind every burger, every fry that you will eat, every milkshake that you will drink, every Coke that you will order. There is a story. And the story is, again, it's told in a way that it is compelling. That if that story is told enough times, it essentially... Though we may not necessarily feel like someone is forcing us to go to McDonald's, the point of it is, is that the story is told enough. It is so much in our face, the story about McDonald's. To the point that most of us or the generation that's coming up now, they may not know the complete story. But that's okay. In most cases, people, we just kind of follow suit. Well, mom did it, dad did it, my aunt did it, my uncle does it. So I'm gonna follow suit. And this is just the natural progression of us as human beings. We don't seldom fall away from our, tradi our traditions and our routines. So it is important to know that this is just part of the process. And rest assured, the brand that we know all too well, the Golden Arches are, or we know them as McDonald's, they have sold their story. We don't know how true it is. This is what they're telling us, though. That's the reason why the term says, or at least looked at it in a different perspective, it says that the game is sold, not told. So we don't really know how true the story is, but we know that the story is compelling enough that it sells. It's compelling enough that it requires us to, I'm trying to find my feet here. It's compelling enough that it requires us to really think about and, and just forces us to take a stand and say, you know what, I think I'll have a burger today. <laughs> I mean, as crazy as it is, but it works. And as entrepreneurs, it's the same way with us. Whether you're a parent, even if you're a parent, teacher, professor, it doesn't matter. The story that you tell your students how you will engage your students will invite them to be a part of what you're doing. How you will tell your story as a business owner, how you will, how your brand will appear before your prospective customers, how your brand appears before your employees. So behind your brand, there is a story. 
There's a story that has been told over and over and over to the point that it begins as a grassroots effort, if you will, that one person tells a story and yet another person tells a story. The first person who tells a story obviously has to convince or to compel the person that they're telling the story to. And so this story is yet told to another person and yet the third person is compelled, convinced, somehow forcefully taken into the story and sold the story, have purchased the story with everything that, they've, that they have, if you will, monetarily and also mentally and emotionally. Because when you tell your story, I, I mentioned on, I think it was episode 20, I'm looking at here on our Facebook page here. Episode 20 was about making a distinction between your brand and your story. And I mentioned in that episode that each story has five components. One, the character being you the, as, the, as the main character, obviously, the protagonist, the antagonist, those who are with you, obviously the protagonist, and the antagonist, those who are against you. So every story has five parts. You must have the character. You must provide a setting. Again, pretty it all up to make the story that much more convincing, compelling. It must, you must create a plot within this setting. You must bring in conflict within this setting. Again, this is the story that you must tell your customer, your clients. This is how powerful your story is. It must compel to sell. It's something to think about, guys. It's something to take back to the drawing board, the dry eraser board, and look at how you are telling your story. What are people saying about Curtis? What are people saying about you? You have a brand, you have videos, you have blogs that you've written, you have information out there on the web. What are your clients saying about you? How do they perceive you? Again, the perception is the brand and how your customers see you and I. How are your customers seeing you? They see your brand, but your brand is a fine line. Your brand is within your story, if you will, or your story is within your brand. A story is told, a perception is gathered that is your brand. And from that brand, it spreads like wildfire wildfire <laughs> but from that story your brand is created again a perception is gathered on how your customer potential customer or your current customer sees you and from that a story is told yet another story is told yet another story is told and all of these people have been eventually compelled something of interest was given to them in a story. Could it be the character? Again, looking back at the five components of your story, the five components that are all important about your story as when you tell your story, you shoot videos about your product or your service. You must make sure that this message is consistent, that you're sending the same message out. Each and every time, again, the character is the character, the main character. When you're shooting that video, you're telling that story. Are you the main character? Or are you making your issues or some other situation, some other person, the main character? Because the main character eventually, being you and I, it has to resolve something. The main character has to be placed in a setting. 
The main character has to know the plot that was against him or her. The main character has to recognize the conflict that the plot created. Again, the main character, the setting which the character is sitting in or placed in, and the plot which the is within the setting, if you will, the conflict which is within the 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 plot, and eventually the resolution. This is interesting because it almost appears that you have a container with five, you have a container of five squares, if you will. And in the middle, you have the character, the outside square, you have the setting, and yet the third square, you have the plot. Yet the fourth square, you have a, you have the conflict. And finally, you have the resolution almost appearing like a maze. And you and I have to figure out how we going to tell that story and how we were able to resolve that matter or that situation we're in. This is awesome, guys. This is absolutely awesome. I am totally enjoying it. So we are in a maze. And you and I have to figure out how we are going to tell our story compel our potential customer showing that we are obviously the main character but not too much focus on us because we don't want to forget about the product or the service that we are selling. So we don't want to overshadow making ourselves the, the, the point of the matter and yet we are to a degree, but again, not so much emphasis on us, but yet taking, sharing the story, but coming back to a place about the product and the service that you are selling. So after you have told your story in a most compelling way, now let me show you, in the midst of all what I've gone through, let me show you how this product has come about. This product came about out of all the pressure that life had placed on me, out of necessity, we create and build. We invent, imagine, and eventually bring it to fruition out of necessity. So this maze that you and I have been in and a good part of our lives and most of our lives, and I, I want you guys to really think about that. The five squares, you being, you and I being the main character, being that first square, and on the outside, there are four other larger squares, and eventually the resolution. So again, spend some time and think about that. How important to understand that, again, out of all of these things that are bearing against us at times, the challenges that we face, out of necessity, we create our product and we create a service. And eventually, it's not so much that your product is so wonderful and your service is so great, but it's your story that is compelling. And people are in fact, or your customer, your client, they want some of what you have to offer. That story was exciting. It was invigorating. They felt the enthusiasm and they want some of it. They want to be a part of it. And now you have your product and you have your service that makes them feel a part of what you have told them, a part of the story. So therefore, your narrative is so powerful. And you and I have to do everything that we must to, must do to protect our narrative. And part of our narrative is knowing that it's your attitude. Again, it's our attitude how we are telling this story. 
It's our disposition. Okay? It's how you are standing with your arms folded or your hands by your side. It's what you're thinking about yourself. At any moment, your disposition comes into play. Because if you're thinking it, and in most cases, you're acting it out. That's where your disposition comes in place. You're thinking it, you're acting it out. Disposition, body language. Again, you're thinking it, your disposition shows it. Your body language shows it. It's all about telling your story. It's all about giving or sharing a compelling story. You must compel to sell. The game is sold, not told. So, in fact, the game, as the guru likes to say in urban, urban, uh, 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 in urban slang, I guess, the game is sold, not told. Think about it, guys. How powerful it is because in the end, we don't know. We have no idea whether the story is true or not. But it's a story that's sold. but told in many different ways. I, me I mentioned earlier about the main character of the story. And it's interesting how when we tell our story, you told your story or you tell a story to five people and each person will tell a story in a different way. And equally as you know, as we understand it, that each person will tell that story in a different way, we also have to understand that it's important to know our audience. It's important to know what is going to be the main focal point of our story. It's not so much in that our story changes, because this story that we're telling, it has to be consistent to a degree. So that when we tell it, we're so familiar with the story that we can spin the story one way when we're speaking to one person and spin it another way when we're speaking to yet another story, a, a potential customer or client. So the story must compel in order to sell. You must have a compelling story. And I would venture to say most of us as entrepreneurs, we're so focused on the product. The product is absolutely important. The service is absolutely important. But it's your story that sells. I'm convinced that your story your story, I'm convinced by your story. Your story has been told in such a way that I'm drawn in. I feel that I am the one of the selected few. I feel like I am one of the chosen. A part of the bigger plan, if you will. Your story must be mesmerizing, if you will. To the point where I'm just cuckoo for Cocoa Puss over, over what you told me. That if I do, do these five steps, I too will be successful. The truth of the matter is that each of us have a story. And your product, my product, service, whatever the case may be, we may present it in different fashions. We may have different bells and whistles on our product or offer different things with our services. But the most common thing, whether it be your product, my product, or several other different products, the most common thing or the most common thread in each of those products is the story. 
Your story and my story must be convincing. It must be compelling in order to sell. Back to the scenario or the professor who asked his class, who of you can make a burger better than McDonald's? Some of them were almost kind of shy because they wanted to raise their hand as the camera panned the room. But he convinced them, hey, come on, guys, raise your hand. Anyone can make a burger better than McDonald's. And it's true. But McDonald's has sold a compelling story. Matter of fact, I just seen a commercial or a, a preview of the Ray Kroc story. This is how obvious McDonald's came into into existence by the gentleman Ray Kroc. He is the mastermind of McDonald's. And McDonald's obviously is a Fortune, I think 500, 100 company, Fortune 50, I'm not sure. But nevertheless, the point of it is, is that the story McDonald's has sold wasn't about McDonald's. It was about Ray Kroc. It was about a gentleman who started off selling milkshake machines that no one was buying. And eventually he sold his product to a burger joint and and this, the rest is history. The rest is what we have all bought into. Generations after generations after generations have bought into the story of Ray Kroc. Not McDonald's, but Ray Kroc's story. Guys, this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. And as we are wrapping it up here, and I, uh, uh, I have been using Wirecast to stream my show here on Facebook here and actually I've had Wirecast for quite some time now and have become all too familiar with Wirecast, the ins and outs on it and knowing how to do the lower thirds and all those different things that come with producing a show on Facebook Live or Periscope or any other platform. Uh, Wirecast is an absolutely awesome uh, piece of software and so what I'm doing right now and I've got a product to offer as well. So what I'm doing right now, I am producing shows on uh, Periscope and also on Facebook. So if you know someone who wants their show professionally produced here on Facebook Live, you know someone who wants their show produced professionally on Periscope, send them my email or send them my information. You can contact me at I am Curtis Brooks at I A M Curtis Brooks dot com or excuse me. Yeah. At I am Curtis Brooks dot com. Uh, that is going to be my email. Wow. Wow. I'm all kind of twisted here thinking about other things here. But nevertheless, uh, I apologize for that. You can send them to my email address. That's going to be book me at I am Curtis Brooks dot com. That's B O O K M E at I A M curtisbrooks.com. Again, that's book me at I am curtisbrooks.com. You can again, send them my email address. So again, if you or you know someone who is looking to have their show produced through Wirecast, a professionally produced show here on, uh, by you, by way of Wirecast, and also they're on, on Facebook and Periscope, send them my way. I will be more than happy to talk with them. We can have a Skype conversation and uh, see how we can get things started, get things going here. Again, we're talking about you must compel to sell. My name is Curtis Brooks, guys. This has been absolutely fabulous. I have enjoyed this show here. Talking about you must compel to sell. Your story must compel to sell. If you don't have a story, no one cares about your product. And that's the truth, guys. If you don't have a compelling story, no one cares about your milkshake machines. <laughs> you must have a compelling story, guys. This is absolutely awesome. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. I hope that this has been valuable content to you. I hope that you have taken away some valuable information and that you will take your service, your product to the next level 
with a compelling story. Remember, your story must compel to sell. Guys, my name is Curtis Brooks and this is Entrepreneurship, episode number 22. We are signing off until next week or it's until Thursday at 11 a.m. We'll be back here, same time, same channel here on Facebook Live, Curtis Brooks Transformational slash Coach. You can check us out, check out this video here. It will be here on Facebook after I finish here. So we'll see you on Thursday at 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Central Time here on Facebook Live. Ciao.